Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to make over a few items that I'm actually going to be putting in my, um, in my little studio when I get it finished. So uh, I'm going to start with this chair because I need a, a chair that's comfortable so that I can sit and do my editing and, and voicing over. So I found this one at a thrift store and uh and paid 30 uh 35 dollars for it and uh it's in good condition um there's some wear in the um in the wood but no scratches or dings or anything it's in really good condition and even the upholstery is in good condition but i'm i don't like the upholstery so i'm going to be attempting to cover that so I'm giving this, uh, the wood part of this, two coats of the color buttercream. And, um, and then I'm going to be doing some light distressing on this. And I'm just doing it with sandpaper. Um, and then I'm going to finish this off with a clear wax. And buttercream is a Dixie Belle color if you're not a regular viewer. Uh, I use this color a lot because it's a good off-white color. And like I said, this upholstery was in good condition. And um, I'm just going to cover over the top of it because I feel like it uh, gives it a sturdier feel, if that makes sense. Uh, but I did take the back, um, the back piece of fabric off. Uh, just because around the edges it seemed like it just had a little too much thickness and I didn't want to have to uh, cover over that. Now I said I attempted to cover this. Um, I guess I managed it, uh, but I'm not going to pretend that I know anything at all about upholstery. Uh, I just did my best and it just happened to work out but not without some mistakes and do-overs and then um, and then the finished prod product, uh, I had one little pucker that I wasn't happy with. It wasn't bad at all, um, but it just, it's not something that I enjoy doing or will do in the future. And I'm not going to um, show the process simply because you don't want to watch me to learn how to do this. And I know that I have paint all over my clothes here. I've been painting in the bathroom at the shop also. And we've been very slow with the weather the way it is. And Christmas being uh, just over. So um, this is typically the time of year that we work on the store. And like I said, I've been doing a lot of painting today. Uh, just freshening up walls and even changing some things out. Uh, here I am just trying to figure how I need to make this work. And um, like I said, it was a slow job and a frustrating job. But I did manage finally to get it covered. And I was happy with the look in the end and glad that I didn't spend the money on a new chair. I really considered that to keep from having to do all this, but chairs are so expensive right now. So uh, I was glad that I that I went through the trouble and just made it work. And then I needed a little side table. As you can see, this one's in rough condition, uh, but um, it's the size that I needed, and I'm going to paint it anyway. So uh, I just cleaned this well. And then um, because of this dark stain, um, I thought it might try to bleed through since I'm using the buttercream on this also. Uh, so I'm using a product called Boss and that's a Dixie Belle product. Um, but it will seal this uh, stain in. Uh, it's, it works kind of like a primer and it will seal this um, stain in and as long as I let this dry well before I paint, then um, I shouldn't have any bleed through. So um, this one is gray. Uh, you can get this in white or gray. Um, but I, I had a gray open and I didn't have a white one open. So I just decided to do this in gray. 
and I just did one coat of this and then let it dry well and then um, and then I painted directly over the top of this with um, with the buttercream color and then I decided to use my kindest regards stamp and some stays on ink and uh, just cover the top with this uh, with the stamp and you don't have to be exact with this I just kept my writing in the same direction uh, but just um, just was uh, just kind of overlapped it without pressing much around the edges and then I wanted some heavy distress on this and I started out with my sanding block and just decided that um, it was too light of a distress so uh, I wanted it to be more of a chunky distress so I just got out my orbital sander and finished distress distressing it that way and as you can see I got a lot more distressing that way um, and then um, I'm gonna finish this off with a uh, with a flat clear coat and I'm just using uh, Dixie Belle here and it's Dixie Belle flat uh, top coat and I'm just doing one coat on here um, I did do two coats on the very top but one coat on the rest of it and then that's all that I did to finish this one As you can see, that top is not perfect, but it doesn't matter. It still has the look that I'm going for. And then for the next um, item that I'm going to be working on is a lamp. And um, I wanted a lamp on, uh, on the little um, side table. Uh, so I just decided to use this one. This one is iron, and it's a dark iron uh I guess maybe a dark brown uh, so what I want to do on it because I want some items in that room that are darker so that I'll have the contrast with the white walls um, so all I'm doing on this one is um, is using some white wax but I didn't want uh, straight white so I added just a little bit of the color sandbar into a little bit of my wax and that will um, th that will make the uh, detail in it uh, show more of an off white instead of white. Now Waverly has a um, has a white wax that is already off white instead of white, but it's more of a liquid. It would work fine on this because I'm not wouldn't worry with it pulling the paint off. Uh, but the only thing about the Waverly wax is because it's liquid, if you're not careful, you'll pull more of your paint off. Uh, all the waxes will do that somewhat if you're not careful. Uh, but, um, but Waverly definitely does that. Although I do like, I do like the wax. Um, but like I said, you can only use it on certain pro projects because you risk pulling more of your paint off. So uh, this one, because it's a white wax rather than off-white, then um, all you have to do is just add a little bit of a, a darker white. In this case, like I said, I just used a little bit of sandbar, which is kind of like a tan, and, uh, and then made my white wax not so white. And all I did was just brush it on and uh, wipe it off. And then that's a very quick fix for um for this it'll give it'll make all that detail pop and uh tones it down because the brown that um that uh the high spots of the brown will be a lighter brown than this is and then the low spots will be the off-white and it just gives it a really pretty look i think I love that this is iron. I just love that. Um, I love the heaviness of it, especially uh, with it having that chunky base uh, because uh, it being a side table lamp, um, it, you don't risk it being bumped and knocked off as easily because it'll stay put much better. 
So like I said, I just uh, com completely cover this with the with the white wax that I've added some tan into, and then and then I'll just wipe that off, and then that's all that I'll do to this. But I'm going to be putting a lampshade on it. So finding a lampshade that fit this one was a little bit trickier because it has a wider, uh, where it has the two sockets on the top, uh, it's wider. And I settled on one that if this lamp were going to be used uh, much, then um, I don't know that it would have worked great because um, it's not a wider um lampshade and um so it puts it a little close uh to the lights uh or the bulbs uh but honestly this is a lamp that is not going to be used much at all if even if any uh, i'm more doing this for the look because i just felt like the little side table with the lamp would kind of complete that look uh, but I did find this one, and, and it it is wide enough that it isn't against the, the sockets at all, or not terribly close, but I would prefer that it was just a little further away from it. But if I were to find one that did that, then I just felt like it would look like it was all shade, and I just didn't want that. So I'm just going more about the look this time. And here I have just cut up some lace curtains uh, and into strips and I'm just wrapping them around I tied it at the top and then I'm just going to wrap it around until I run out of that strip and then I'll take another strip and just tie a knot in that and um, and just keep going and I'm letting my knot show because um, for one thing I want that fabric to kind of um, stick out if that makes sense uh, I just wanted to give it some extra texture and I'll be trimming that to for a better look later but also um, I'm going to be covering the knot up with a uh, with a rose so um, so I don't mind that that shows so if you haven't seen my uh, shabby roses, um, I have uh, a few videos where I do them more in detail, and um, and so I'll try to attach that video in the the description and uh, show how I make those more closely. I'll do it a little on here, but um, I'll I'll attach some videos where you can watch them more closely. But here I'm just hot gluing some lace, uh, some flat lace to the top of this. And then at the bottom, I'll, I'll glue some gathered lace uh, all the way around. As you can see here where I've tied each of these strips together, that's where I'm going to be putting my, my roses. And uh, like I said, I'll make a couple on here. Uh, but then attach a video to to show that more in detail. And I made sure here when I was tying these strips together to make sure that all the knots were on the outside because I didn't want any uh, loose fabric on the inside that might get too close to the bulbs. Uh, but like I said, this is not going to be a fire hazard because if I were to turn it on at all, I'll be right with it, uh, but I, I won't ever leave it on unattended, and like I said, most likely won't even use it anyway. It's just more of a decor piece, and I may change the shade out at some point and then use this one on something else, but this will just do for now, and um, and like I said, I may just find something that, that will uh, work aesthetically and um, and more practically. So now that I have this covered and have my lace trim glued on, then I'm just gonna make some of my shabby roses. And um, 
I'm only going to make one or two on here, and uh, I'll be adding, um, I'll be adding a video in the description uh, where I do these much more in detail. And if you haven't watched one of those, uh, these are very simple to make. You just tie a knot in uh, on the in the end of some torn or cut strips of fabric, and then uh, you glue that knot to the center, and then you just twist and wrap and uh, add a dot of glue here and there. So you just twist it and um, and wrap it around your knot, and you can. Uh, change different directions as you twist uh, and that will just add some extra dimension. Now obviously you could add a lot more of these than I did. I'm just covering the little knots but um, you could just uh, you could put a lot more. You could actually even put some around the top or the bottom um, but I just wanted to keep mine a little more simple. And you can use most any fabric for this. You could obviously use any lace or um, you could cut strips uh, from a tea towel or um, you could use muslin fabric uh, or even torn sheets. Um, I've even cut strips of the warm and natural fabric uh, that just kind of makes it chunkier rose. Uh, but there's just a number of fabrics that you can use for this. And I'm not good about doing it, but um, it's a good idea to make uh, several ahead that you can use on different items. And then when you get to an item like this, it'll go a lot quicker. And then the last item that I'm going to be doing is just a little cast iron bird. Um, and I... Uh, these came in just kind of a dark brown, almost black color. And I'm just going to, you don't see all the detail at all. So I'm just going to take my, uh, my Dixie Belle Color Buttercream and give this one coat because I'm going to be doing a colored wax over the top of this. So I just do one coat, let it dry well. And then I'm going to take some clear wax and just put a few drops of a dark blue uh, paint in it uh, and then that will make a blue wax and you can do that with any color uh, just use clear wax and add any color to it that you want and uh, and then what what stays down in all the detail will be that color and then obviously it will add a little color to uh, to the rest of it also. Now when I watch the after of this uh, of this little bird in the video, uh, I decided that I wanted some extra dimension on this. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna tomorrow maybe add some uh, bronze gilding wax to this and see what that looks like. And if I'm happy with how that turns out, I'll show that on my next video. But like I said, I did two coats of this. Uh, after I put the first coat on, I let it dry and then did a second coat to add more of the blue. But um, I'm thinking that I want another color. And uh, like I said, I think that bronze will be good to just kind of add here and there on this. And I feel like it'll give it a lot more dimension. And as you can see there, it needs a little something. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.